Hello, everybody. Welcome to the class. Uh, we're going to wait just a few minutes. Good evening. We're going to wait just a few minutes so everybody gets into that one, okay? Hello, hello, good evening. Hello, good evening. Hey everybody, welcome to the class. It's a pleasure to be here with you. I hope you had a very good Wednesday. So yes, we did. Nice, very good. Today we're gonna start with the platform. This is the platform. I remember that we're doing okay. Yesterday we had to do this uh exercise, the 1.3, and this is the class of tonight. So tonight we have to do this exercise, okay. That will be it. Good. So let's jump into it and let's check about the attendance. Ada Patricia Linares Galdames. Present teacher. Good. Adriana Stephanie Martinez Flores. Alejandra Michelle Hueso Nájera. Ana Selmi Chavez. Edwin Alexander Ayala Erasu. Present. Good. Gloria Elizabeth Linares Galdamas. Carla Verónica Vázquez de Rivas. Present. Good. Maybe Coromoto García de Calderón. Hola, present. Good. Manuel Good Antonio teacher, Pal Gloria. Ah, ok. <laughs> Eh, Manuel Antonio Palma. Present teacher. Good. María Elena Guadalupe Peñate Escobar. Present teacher. Good. Mario Ernesto Villeda. Rosa Elena Salgado de Serrano. 
Good evening, present. Good evening. Silvia Suleima Rodríguez de González. Susana Beatriz Ortiz de Cornejo. Susana Carolina Hernández Iraeta. Walter Mauricio Morales Araujo. Good evening, present. Good evening. Wendy Maribel Zabaleta Ochoa. Present. Perfect. Welcome to the class then. So it's very hot here in Santa Ana. I don't know how is there where you are. Uh, let's be careful whenever you are driving. Remember that. That is very important. Right now I was driving back home from San Salvador to Santa Ana and there was an accident. So let's be careful with that, okay? Oh. Yeah, it was a big, big accident. Anyways. Okay, we are going to start tonight with a little video. Okay, so uh, let's check about that one. And you are going to tell me some opinions or comments about the video. So here we go. Quartz Power Group is an energy company based in the UK. Marcus, the managing director, wants to discuss the company's sales figures. He is meeting Maya, the finance director, David, the sales and marketing director, and Anna, the customer services director. Now, you all know why I've called this meeting. Uh, sales figures for our region are down and we need to address this as soon as we can. So I'd like to start by asking Maya to talk us through the figures. Okay, Maya? Fine. And then we can take a look at the products we're offering and compare them with the competition. So, Maya, over to you. Thanks, Marcus. Well, I've prepared some handouts to show you how the figures are looking. If we look at sales year to date, so, in order to meet budget this year, we will, in my opinion, have to start some cost-saving measures. What do you mean by that? Redundancies? That's one possibility. I can't agree with you there. We need a strong workforce. OK, thanks, Maya. Look, cost-cutting is something that we need to think about. But we also need to stop the downturn in sales and regain market share. So can I bring you in here, David? Any comments? Well, it's hard to know what the problem is. Our products are competitive. So they're not getting better offers from the competition? I don't think so. How about I talk you through our offers at the moment? I've prepared some handouts. Yes, go ahead. It'll be good to look at the details. OK, thanks, David. That was all useful information. So, Anna, can we turn to you now? Do you have any ideas why this downturn is happening? Well, it's true we are seeing a decrease in custom in our region. There's also been an increase in customers cancelling new contracts within 14 days. So, but, but do I... you know why? Do the customers say why they don't like our offers? I personally feel that this is vital information. I mean, if, if I can we finish can't... what I was saying. I'd like to suggest we review our customer account procedures from first contact to after sales care. I mean, perhaps it would be a good idea to start with that and see if the sales figures improve. Thanks, Anna. What do you two think of that? Can I make another suggestion? I think we need to see the whole picture from the customer's point of view. A customer survey, perhaps? That would be a big project. It would need a project team, which means taking staff from other departments. Actually, I was thinking about hiring an external researcher. Get a neutral view on our position in the market and customers' views on us. Oh, I like that idea. I think it could be very useful information. Which department pays for it, though? We can talk about that in a minute. Do you agree in principle, though, that we need to understand the cause of the problem. Yes, I suppose so. Good. David, could you look for a market research company we could work with on this? Sure. Great. Well, let's move on then, shall we? 
Okay, what did you understand on the video? What are your comments? So it was a meeting of a director level and they were talking about uh, how to increase the sales and a, a few of uh, uh, a point of view of the customer director was that she has observed that decreasing customs in the region and increasing can sell contracts uh, in between 14 days and the financial director has proposed to a contract an external consultant to try to understand the view of point of the customers in another um, in another stakeholders and um, at first uh, the 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 customer direct the customers director was not uh, has not agreed with it but uh, i think the most important thing was that the the midpoint was to understand the cause of the problem like the general director said and yes a very good, very good summary, very nice wrap up. And yeah, so uh, some people they were providing some opinion and they are to, to check the cause of the problem and they, they get the consultant were most important points. Very good, perfect. thank you. Any other comment or opinion or anything that caught your attention on the video? Me, teacher. Okay. Uh, yes, uh, in my opinion, like this uh, meeting, uh, I I saw uh, the the person that uh, leading the the meeting uh, give a specific time for each person. Uh, also, he asked for point of view or. He asked uh, one person that that what what he or she think about the other person uh, said, right? Very good, perfect. Thank you for your comments, and that is true. I mean, asking for opinion. I mean, the meetings are important because of that. Sometimes yeah. other people can come with a very nice idea or a very important idea. So we can agree on something, right? Good, perfect, thank you. Any other opinion, any other comments? Something else that you want to add? Me, teacher. Okay. Good evening. Okay. And for me, the, the, the main purpose of the meeting was how to increase the sales. But for my perception, but it seemed to me a tense environment. In the yeah, it is at some point it was something like that, right? At some point it was kind of tense. Um, also remember that uh, English people, I mean, people in England, they are very, very straight to the point, and if they don't like something, they say right. right. To the point. So, uh, mm -hmm. they that happens. That happens in the United States is like that, but it's even more in Europe. Uh, in England, they. They can go and say, I don't like that. I don't want to do that. So even if it's the job or that. So maybe here in Latin America, it's not like that one, right? We are like, oh, you know, uh, that is a very good idea, but maybe we can do something different, <laughs> right? But not in, in, in English, it's, I mean, people, they are very, very straightforward on that one. So good, perfect, thank you. So now we're going to check about the book. So we have another lesson here. How to use PDFs, part one. Okay, uh, I don't know if you know, but whenever you finish the advanced courses, meaning the six courses, so you still miss other three, at the end of that, you are going to do a certification, a global certification that is called the TOEFL, okay? The TOEFL is a test, okay? It's 
It's not difficult, but it's an extensive uh, test. It has different parts. And one of the parts that comes in the TOEFL is that you have to write, to write an essay, okay? So it's very important, these rules. The things that we're going to check on how to write a paragraph, uh, what is the topic, uh, how you are going to relate everything, that is very important because that is going to be evaluated in that part. So the TOEFL has different parts, listening, it has a grammar part, it has like a, the writing part, there is a part where you have to record yourself in a video uh, and they evaluate all these parts. Maybe uh, later on, maybe next two weeks, we're going to discuss a little bit more about the TOEFL, but these parts are important because of that. Because whenever you are going to write the essay, they are going to evaluate everything, including the periods, right? Where you are going to put the periods there. So that's why these parts are important and are the parts where I explained you how to write a paragraph, how to write a whole thing. That is also good. So this is the first part. So how to use periods part one. Uh, let's see. Um, Walter, Mauricio, could you please help me read in the chart? Hello, Walter. Uh, hello, teacher. And uh, when our supervisor had been gone? Uh, yeah, everything. From the part that says a period helps mark. Okay, thank you. A period helps mark the end of a sentence <clears throat> and the beginning of a new one. Whatever period are also used with war or prices that do not necessarily express complaints, ideas. Continue, yes. Yes, please. Uh, I use the period after the end of sentence to avoid a run of sentence. Uh, our supervisor had had been hard to nearly next week. He will take place in the meeting room on the three floor. Third floor. Uh, our supervisor has been going to meeting and next week he will take place in the meeting room on the three floor. Room. And this is period after uh, our racial life, Mr. Miss um, Junior, Junior, or in EM, EM, AG. Disappear after element of leaf. Uh, when those elements are necessary, the grammatical and meaning of the introductory sentence. Uh, at the meeting, it was agreed that the supervisor of each unit should follow good arm and silence in Christ little deal, reduction on the production cost, little C, and go and start writing. Do not use a period after each element. In the list when the introductory starting is grammatically complete. B, use the requires everything for the next meeting. Little e. uh, 15. 16. A copy of the solar core. Little B. One projector. 
Peter C. Poinsett of a speaker. Perfect. Thank you, uh, uh, Walter. So this is like the first explanation, okay? In general, a period helps mark the end of a sentence and the beginning of a new sentence. However, okay, periods are also used with words or phrases that do not necessarily express, express complete ideas. So you can put the period when you finish a complete idea, or you can use a period when you finish a sentence but it's going to continue the idea, okay? So that is the first thing. Uh, do you have any questions on the first part? So there are two situations, uh, go ahead. These rules are similar of grammatical rules in Spanish teaching. The first part, yes. The first yeah, the part, part is part in number one and two. Yeah, so mm -hmm. it's going to be, yeah, the same. So they also remember that period has a different name when we're speaking about um, well, uh, in internet, right? So you say www, uh -huh. do you remember that? Mm -hmm. What is the name of that, everybody? It's not period, that, w, that, 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 very good. That, that. So mm -hmm. when you're talking about internet or anything like that, like an email is going to be Dot com. Dot. Dot com. Yes, and also, also it's going to be a different name when you're talking about numbers. If you talk about numbers, what is the name of that? Point. 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 Very good. So when you are speaking about numbers, you say 9.5. It's not period, okay? It's not nine period five. It's 9.5, 6.11, uh, anything that you want to say in numbers. The name of that one is going to be point. Okay, so let's check the first one. Use a period after the end of a sentence to avoid a run-on sentence. A run-on is like a mistake, an error in grammar in English. So we have the same sentence. The first one is correct, and the second one is incorrect. So, for example, all supervisors have been called to the meeting next week. Period. There we need a period because the sentence is finished. It will take place in the meeting room on the third floor. So that is the same idea. Okay, but different sentence. So if you finish a sentence, we're going to put a period into that. One. So that is the first, one, okay? Look at the second one. It says, all supervisors have been called to the meeting next week. It will take place in the meeting room on the third floor. I mean, if you say like that, the other person is going to say, what? I'm sorry, I don't understand. So you have to do a pause. Even when it's the same idea, we need a period there. So all supervisors have been called to the meeting next week. It will take place in the meeting room on the third floor. So that is, okay. Do you have any questions about this? Teacher, uh, we read other other example or what? What do do we do? Uh, I'm sorry. Could you please repeat the question? Uh, we we write other samples or what? Or what? Uh, yeah. Actually, we're going to do something very similar here. So we're going to do an exercise. Uh, but in this case, this is very similar as in Spanish, as Anna Selmy would say. In Spanish, if you don't put a period between two sentences, it feels very weird, right? It feels strange. So you have to write it, and also you have to make a pause when you are saying it. That would be it. Any other questions? Sorry, teacher, I don't, I don't understand. 
What don't you understand? I don't get the question then. The, what we do or, or in the exercise, what is? We are not in the exercise yet. This is just the explanation. Oh, explanation. Okay. Yeah. So this is not an exercise, it's just the explanation. So it's an example. Oh. So the example is, this is the same sentence. The first one is correct because we have the period. The oh. second one is incorrect because it doesn't have a period. Okay. So it's just, uh, this is very important that we need to understand first. Then we can move to the other one. Okay. Do you have any questions about the first part? Nope. Good. Clear. I Second have part. A question. Go ahead. Um, the part uh, B uh, before um, third floor uh, fits uh, take a point in before parenthesis. No. The thing is that uh, run on means that this is a mistake. The letter B, uh, all the sentence is not correct. And the name of this mistake is a run on. A run on is the name of uh, when a sentence, uh, they are together, when two sentences are together and you don't put a period. The name of that mistake is run on. Okay, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. So it's very important, the period. You can see something very small makes the difference, not only by writing, but also to speak. Uh, in the TOEFL, if you don't put the period where it belongs, it's not correct, okay? So you are going to lose some points into that one. That is a very important. Uh, do you have any other question on the first part? No questions. Okay, the other one, number two, says use a period after abbreviations. This is exactly the same as in Spanish. So how do you say this one? Do you remember? Mistress. 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 Yeah, because remember that it's not the same to say mistress than mister. I mean, that is totally different. If you say to a woman, mister, oh, she will be offended. Mm -hmm. Right. Wow. Or the opposite. If you say mistress to a man, he will be offended, right? So it's very important the pronunciation of trust. The first one is mistress, the second one is mister. Mm -hmm. Okay, junior. Uh, in English is very common that if you have a son and the name is the same, they say junior to that person. Also, it's included in the name sometimes. Okay, so it's a title, junior. Corp as in corporation, right? So we're going to put the period after that one. Inc. What is ink? Incorporation. Incorporated. 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 Very good. So we, we're talking about a specific kind of business, right? You know what is AM and you know what is PM, right? But we uh, do you know what is EG? For example. Well, is for example, example, example given. That is it. Example, example given. Example given. So it's like for example, right? But in English we say example given. Very good. So whenever you have an abbreviation, we're going to use a period to that one. That is very easy. The third one, that is special for English. So we are going to use a period after elements of lists when those elements are necessary to complete the grammatical meaning of the introductory sentence. What is the meaning of that one? We have two examples. The first one it says, at the meeting, it was agreed that the supervisor of each unit should follow up on, can you see here? Follow up on means that is a the, the next thing that we're going to read is a continuation, is something from the same idea. Okay, so 
if this that we have here below, if everything that is here is something that completes the introductory uh, sentence, then we're going to use a period. Look at that. A period is there. Okay, it's because everything is together. It's the same idea. So at the meeting, it was agreed that the supervisor of each unit should follow up on sales increase, reduction of production costs, ongoing staff training. Period is necessary there. On the other example, it says, do not use period after each element in the list when the introduction statement is grammatically complete. So for example, be sure to request everything for the next meeting. So then, grammatically is complete. It's not, I mean, the other part is like the points that we need to follow up on, but it's not going to be a complementary of the first sentence. So for example, it says 15 copies of the sales report, no period. We see there, there is no period. One projector, no period. One set of speakers, not period. So in both lists, we have different items regarding the introductory sentence. But in the first one, the sentences in A, B, and C are grammatically complement of the meaning of the sentence. On the second one, the introductory sentence is finished. So the rest are lost, different items. That, we that is very important. Okay. Do you have any questions on this? Nope. Clear yeah. as of chat. Huh? Teacher, uh, I don't understand. Uh, in the in the first uh, example, yes, uh, because the the three elements A, B, C, uh, com complete the the meaning of the sentence. Exactly, complete the meaning but, of this sentence. Uh -huh. uh, yes, yeah, but in the second one, uh, I don't know why the sentence uh, does complete okay there is a trick for this so if you don't okay. get it like that it's like this uh, imagine that i say uh, let's start uh backwards imagine that i say be sure to request everything for the next meeting if i finish there the sentence i mean makes sense if i say to everybody for example hey uh be sure to complete everything for the next meeting. You can say, yes, okay, uh, yes, uh, we are going to. So the sentence is complete. You don't need more information. I mean, the rest of the information is additional information. This is additional. But if I say only, be sure to request everything for the next meeting, you can answer, yes, yes, I'm going to do it. But on the second one, I mean, in the first one, if I say, at uh, the meeting, it was agreed that the supervisor and each unit should follow up on. If I stop there, if I don't say the other part, you are going to be like waiting. Upon what? I mean, you know that there is something else. So that is the trick. If the sentence, it doesn't make sense by itself, that means that all the things that are here are part of this. If the sentence, only the sentence, makes sense by itself, separate, that means that these are additional information and we don't need a period on that. Is that clear? Do you understand that way? Yes, teacher. Thank you. Very good. Perfect. So that is a little trick that you have, you can follow. So if the sentence, it makes sense, that means that the rest is just additional information for this. But if the sentence 
doesn't make sense alone, separated. That means that we need, we need a period to go. Good, any other question? Okay, so now we're going to do the exercise. Yes, this is the exercise. So it says, read the following email. Add the missing periods related to the issues explained in the box above. Compare your choices with them. Okay, so I'm going to give you a few minutes for you to check into this, and then you are going to tell me how you did, okay? Have you finished or do you need more time? Yes, I am finished. Okay, and the rest of the people? Finish. Okay. So it says from M Rivas at United Entrepreneurs.sv to Glosa, G Loza at United Entrepreneurs.sv. September 24, 2018, catering request meeting. Okay, oh. and in the, um, there is not necessary. Not but necessary, what, okay. Yeah, what about yeah. the rest? In Dear Mrs. Loza, where, where is the first mistake? And, mistress. Uh, mistress. And Good. Thank you mistress. for your last email, uh -huh. Mrs. Mistress. Mistress, mistress? Yeah. yes. And that is the first one. Very good. Okay. And the next one? Uh, after email. Very good. Here. Period. Period. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your last email. Period. Period. 
Yeah. Okay, any other mistake here in this paragraph? I would like to inform you that you requested. No. Okay, do we need periods on these ones? No. No. No, because it's, it's okay. complete the sentence. This is only a list. Mm -hmm. Okay, some people say yes, some people say no. There is a difference. For me, uh, say a real. Miss, missing each item is the Miss period. period. Okay. Yes. Okay, the trick, the trick is this. If I read the sentence and it makes sense, we don't need a period, right? So let's read the sentence. The caterer service will provide the following for each participant. Okay. So if I say, for example, imagine that I say to Ada, Ada, the caterer service will provide the following for each participant. Do you believe that the idea is complete or we need the other part to complete the sentence? Need okay. other parts because no say why is the provide very good. So the killer service will provide the following for each participant, and you are waiting for what, right? What is going to be next? So yes, mm. yes, we need a period on all of this. Yes, yes, okay. because you don't you don't know exactly on the first sentence we don't yes. know what's yes. going on, right? Yes, yes. Teacher in capital letter no. Uh, yeah, we can use capital letter. That is either or. So not important. Uh, sometimes it's possible to leave it lowercase. Uh, in this case, it's possible, but capital letter would be better. Okay. Uh, what is the next? PM. PM. Very good. PM is missing that one. Any other? No. No, right? That is it. Okay, so you can see how important is the period. If you don't set the period where it belongs, there are some problems. Some people might believe that you are not that professional in the emails or anything like that one. So little things makes the difference. That is a very important thing. Okay, do you have any? Go ahead. Yes, could you please repeat how to... Do... How do you read the email, please? Uh, or the whole the whole email? Yes, please. Okay, it will be from m rivas at united entrepreneurs dot sv to g losa at, at yeah at okay thank you this is yeah. my so ah okay very well so uh, thank you at yeah the 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 this sign I'm not able to to do it here. Yeah, but that is at, at uh, on the emails, okay? So you can say, for example, Eric Asensio at google.com, for example. So at. Thank you, teacher. Very good. Perfect. Nice. Any other question? No more. Very good. Uh, we're not going to do that one, but we're going to continue with uh, the second part of the video that we checked, okay? So we're going to watch the video and then tell me your comments or opinions about that. Here we go. Paul is the Human Resources Manager at Quartz Power Group. He has called a meeting with some of his colleagues to discuss a new training program. Right, shall we get started? Well, we're here to talk about a new training program for the call centre. David, I asked you to come because you were involved in the market research we did, so I thought you could give us a short summary of the findings. And Anna, obviously, it's your customer service teams who will be affected by this. Yes, exactly. So we thought you might have some ideas on the best way to approach the training programme. And Maria will be developing and running the training. 
Okay, David, could you run us through the main points from the research? Sure. Um, we worked with a market research agency over a period of a few weeks to gather information about our customers and what they thought of us. And the results were, well, mixed. Sorry, can I just check? Why was this research done? Had there been complaints or...? Some complaints, yes, but also we are losing customers in the region and we wanted to know why. Sorry, I'm not sure I understand. Was the research about getting customer points of view or about customer profiles? It was to get customer feedback on the company and its services. Right, I see. So, the results showed a few areas where customers were not happy. One of the most common, how shall I put it, issues was with the call centre. I see. Can you be more specific? Well, basically, it seems that customers feel they are not getting good service and they are leaving us for another supplier. Right. So are you saying customers are leaving us because of the service from the staff or could there be other reasons too? I mean, could it be that we haven't got very good systems in place for our staff? Yeah, could be. Anna? Look, I have no problem with giving the staff a refresher course, but starting completely from scratch seems like a waste of time and money. They all receive training when they start anyway. Yes, that's a good point, Anna. And we don't know yet if we will have to start from scratch. It may be that we haven't done enough to monitor their activity and that a simple refresher course will be enough. Or it may be that we have to look at customer contact from start to finish and try to implement some new protocols. Maria? Yes, that's right. I'm sure there's a way of dealing with this sensitively. Anna, I realise it's not easy for you to suggest more training for your staff. So I wondered if we could start with a review of the current training approach and look at what we need to do to address the problems brought up in the survey. Yes, we could do that. But I would need to look at the full report first, of course. Um, and I understand your point about possibly wasting time and money, so perhaps you and I could look at the report together? Yes, OK. Then we'll be able to decide what needs addressing and how. If it's more training or even a complete systems overhaul. Good idea. Uh, I've brought in copies of the report. Perhaps we could start with the highlights first. Good. Comments about the video. What did you understand? Mm, they discuss about uh, new training programs um, maybe for the employees. Very good. A new training program for all the employees. Very nice. And they were discussing some things, right? Uh, any other comment or opinion? Yes, that it was um, about to, to, in, to think about a training program for the call center, but it should be based on the results of the uh, research they have made. Uh, with the um, with the customers, yes, because the the research was made to get a customer feedback of the company and services, and um, on um, on the end, they was really not sure if the uh, training program is the right solution for the problem addressed by the research uh, outcomes. And then they want to think about a, a review of the current training program uh, and also the if it would be need a complete system of a halt so to attend the, the customers and how they are offering the services. 
very good, very complete. So that is everything that happens there on the meeting, right? Uh, and it's very interesting how they decide things. Uh, I mean, I don't know if you have checked on that one. I don't remember if it's in this module, but uh, training is something very important, right? And just to know that you have to deliver the training, I mean, you have to do many things before the training, during the training and after the training. And those decisions are very important. And the meeting was very interesting about because of that one, because they were speaking about the research they made with the customers to see what things the agents they need to have, right? What skills they have to develop. Perfect, very good. Uh, any other comments or opinion on the video? Okay. So let's jump into the class of tonight how to chair an effective business meeting. Uh, let's start with Ada Patricia. Yeah, could you please read? Okay. Video conference number three and share an effective business meeting. Um, excuse me, I know, look, okay. Effectiveness or effectivity is a compatibility is a, or product, producing and decided result or ability to produce. Decided output when something is demand effective, Deemed. it means, come on. Yeah, when something is deemed effective. Effective. It means it has an intended or expected outcome or produce a deep, vivid impression. Very good. So the first thing that we have there is, uh, I mean, if we, we're talking about effective business meetings, we need to start with what is effectiveness or effectivity, right? So what is that? Is the capability of producing a desired result or the ability to produce a desired output. When something is deemed effective, it means it has an intended or expected outcome or produces a deep, vivid impression. So something effective means that uh, we achieve the goals, the target, that we uh, expected before that. So we say it's effective, okay? So that will be the first part. Okay, and uh, the first or the introduction about the uh, topic is going to be for Maybe. Could you please help me read this? Yes, sure. A good chair helps the meeting to run smoothly and efficiently. The person who shares a meeting can sometimes be referred to as the facilitator. They will make sure that all the business is discussed, everyone's views are heard, clear decisions are reached, and the meeting starts and finish on time. Good. What did you understand on that? Oh, um, it is uh, talking uh, uh, talking us about the 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 role from a good chair. What does a good chair do? And then uh, uh, then the it explained that a good chair or facilitator is who helps the meeting to run uh, efficiently, efficiently. And a, a facilitator makes sure all these points that are described, uh, all the business is discussed, everyone's views are heard, it's a clear decision are reached. So the order of the business, the in the time, the meeting start and finish of time, how, how to conduct, very uh, uh -huh. perfect. Thank you, my baby. So that is it in general, right? 
So for uh, for the meaning to be successful, effective, uh, well, a good chair, a good facilitator uh, has to run smoothly and efficient, right? Has to be very nice. Everybody finishes the meeting and everybody says, good meeting. We agreed on many yeah. things and we were very productive, <laughs> right? So that is perfect. Uh, what is smoothly, anybody? Smooth. So like soft, without soft. obstacle, without obstacle, run smoothly, like a, a, on the agenda. You can say, oh, also, he's, uh, the chair is able to keep the agenda like it has been planned. Very good. Perfect. Thank you very much. Okay, let's go to the next one. Uh, this is for Maria Elena. A uh, good uh, chair will also always be thinking about the meeting overall, not just the topic under discussion. This can make it more difficult for you to participate in the discussion. Always um, at, to draw a balance between hearing every John's view and getting to the business. Never use the position a chair as on punctuality um, to put forward the views to the, to the exclusion of others or, do, or to dominate the meeting. Good. What did you understand on that one, Mariela? Um, continuing speaking about a good chair and how this person needs to take a control of the agenda and the meeting. Very good. So, yeah, uh, it's very interesting what it says at the beginning, right? A good chair always is thinking about the meeting overall, the whole meeting, not only about the topic that we're discussing, but the times uh, that everybody is providing opinions, things like that one. So that is very, very important, right? And always aim to draw a balance between hearing everyone's views and never use their position as chair as an opportunity to put forward their views. So we need to listen to everybody, right? Very good, perfect. Uh, I don't see any more here, so let's move on. The next one is for Carla Vasquez. No one can do this without the cooperation and agreement of the whole meeting. The third person is not a miracle worker. Everyone can learn how to say well. It just takes a bit of stuff or practice. You will get more confident with experience. Like watching how the other people show meeting and seeing what works and what doesn't. Very good, perfect. So what did you understand on this one? Um, it's very important to respect that uh, the person who shares the meaning. Uh, uh, because the participant try to watch and follow uh, other people uh, um, respect uh, when watching how other people share the meeting. Uh, for me, it's basically that is respect to to share the meeting or leave the, the meeting. Okay, very good, perfect. So yeah, definitely we need to respect and we need to to try that everybody participates. Right. I mean, uh, I, I believe that this is a very important thing because uh, what it says here in this paragraph, because the three things are important. I mean, no one can do this alone. For the meaning to be successful, we need the cooperation of everybody participating. Right? We need to listen to them. I mean, that's why there is a meeting, right? If, uh, if I do that by myself, I don't need anybody else. I just decide myself. 
But the meeting, the idea of the meeting is that everybody is going to bring some ideas, information that is relevant, things like that. The second part is very important as well. Everyone can learn how to chant well. So yes, this is a process as everything in the world. Uh, nobody knows how to be a good facilitator uh, at the beginning. You need to get some experience, right? And you can see how other people do that one. And you can get some ideas on what you want to do. So that is a very good thing about this. Good, perfect. And no new work here, okay. The next one is going to be for Susana Beatriz. Some groups don't have a formal role of share or a name share person. However, ever even very small or informal meetings need some direction and organization. You could decide to rate uh, this role. This has the advan advantage that is spare the responsibility and give everyone and say to be involved with the running of the group. Okay, so what did you understand on this side? Uh, in your own words, what do you understand? Um, it's a for me my um it's a specific uh is it's a those a two situations is a when a meeting informal um is a a meeting informal is a meeting informal is a not necessary uh, is a como what is when is a role a personal role or oh, is a um, how do you say encargado the chair chair person oh. okay okay mm -hmm. okay very good so uh, this is very true I believe that you have been in meetings like this. Some meetings, some groups don't have a formal role chair. So sometimes there is not a leader, right? Sometimes we are all the different departments and uh, we don't, I mean, we don't have somebody that is going to be the leader or the facilitator. But even if you, this is a very small or very informal meeting, they, you need a direction organization, you need to have an agenda, you need many things. So what happens sometimes is that you decide who is going to be the, the owner, right? The facilitator. And sometimes what happens in this kind of meetings when everybody is the same level uh, is that we rotate. We rotate the role. So to, tomorrow, Ada is going to be the chair. The next day, Rosalena. The next day, Manuel Antonio. So that is something very good, right? And it's an advantage because in that way, everybody's involved and everybody's responsible. So everybody uh, is part of the group. So that is a very important thing, okay? Yes, teacher, it's a good measure because uh, when the policy is rot rotate, you are training uh, because you uh, the good chair, requires practice, more practice, more practice. Very good, so that is it. Yes, sometimes, you know, when we are not comfortable is because uh, about this kind of rules, is because we don't have that experience. But if you continue doing, at the end, you are going to have the experience. Right? Good. 
The next one is going to be for uh, Rosa Elena. A potential disadvantage of rotating the chair is that no one takes responsibility for the role, or the same person always always ends ends up shading without a proper agreement about this. If you decide to have a rotating chair, work out collectively what is expected of them and agree from the end of each meeting who will share the next one. This gives them the opportunity to think about the meeting and they roll it in it. They hey, what did you understand on that? Uh, the disadvantage uh, that you have a rotating chair is that no one takes the responsibility. Uh, uh, if you decide to have a rotating chair and uh, work out collectively what is expected of them and agree for the end of each meeting, I think that if you don't have a um, someone that is responsibility of the of the of the chair, and no one can. Uh, I think no no one can uh, think about serious uh, seriously about the the meaning. I think. Very good, perfect. So yes, that happens. Uh, if there is not a, a rotation, or or if you are rotating. Sometimes uh, some persons, some people, they have strong uh, character and they are the ones that at the end, every meeting they are the facilitator, they are saying, oh, okay, let's do this and this and this. So that's why that is something that also we need to discuss in the meetings, right? Okay, if you are going to be the facilitator today, uh, we expect other person does it, but we expect that the other also, they try to do this and other things so though. To do right the role. So, uh, the agreements, even in that, is very important. Okay, very good. Um, let's move on. I don't see any more here. Let's see, this is going to be for uh, Wendy Maribel. Okay, teacher. To share a meeting, well, you need to think about the meeting before you arrive at it. Ask yourself the following questions in advance of the meeting. Why are you having the meeting? What and what end result do you want from it? What will you discuss at it? Do you want speakers? Do you need to get more information to inform the discussion? Do you want to ask someone to prepare an introduction? Do you want to distribute, 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 sorry, distribute any information in advance of the meeting? Is is isn't it isn't the share job to uh, feature all this out on their own work together with the secretary um the secretary and other committee members find out what people want to discuss and the and think about how you can raise in such in a clear and inform informed way perfect so what did you understand on this okay um uh, need this about the meeting uh is um, in general, the meaning uh, why um, why how 
Why has? No, how they, 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 they have in the meeting, uh, well, for example, the, uh, the lugar. How do you say lugar? Place. Place. No, it's why. Um, the result uh, discuss or uh, the future discuss or uh, what what is is the discuss in the future uh, in the meeting uh, um, speakers I, I don't know uh, they need need more information for the discussion in the meeting. Um, prepare a discussion, introduction. Sorry, introduction. Um, distribute of any information. Is the I I understand it. Uh, what together with um, the work of the secretary and committed in members and members of commit commit committee committee um, um, uh, as well for why what what result what discuss uh, one one the speakers uh, more information and prepare an introduction i i understand uh, uh, for for the item okay perfect thank you very much so yeah if you really want to uh cheat a meeting well you need to ask yourself some questions right uh so you understand what's going to happen in the meeting or what you need to do before or after the meeting or during the meeting. Some questions are these, uh, probably depending on the meeting that you are going to have, uh, probably it's going to be a different kind of questions. But these are good examples. I mean, why are you having, which topics are you going to, to discuss? What end result do you want from it? I mean, are we going to get an agreement are we going to uh, assign activities to other people? Things like that. Uh, what will you discuss today? Uh, do you want speakers? I mean, the equipment or the room that you need is also very important. So sometimes, uh, as we discussed before, nowadays it's very popular to have meetings with, uh, with, uh, Zoom or Google Meet or anything like that. But if that is the case, you need an equipment so you can see the other people and things like that, right? Uh, do you want uh, to ask someone to prepare an introduction or to speak about different topics? Uh, distribute information in advance? That is also that I really like to do. So if we're going to have a meeting, so everybody understands what is this meeting about? I send information on the agenda so they can start with that. Okay. And uh, yeah, you can ask help for other departments, secretary, uh, any other people that might be involved that one before the meeting. So you plan very good. Good, good. Uh, let me see, there is no word here. I okay, this is going to be for Manuel. Hello, Manuel. Okay, teacher. Okay. So, uh, do you want everyone at the meeting to feel comfortable about speaking and putting their point of view? For a meeting to work well, Everyone needs to feel welcome, include and inform. 
Here are a few tips. Organize someone to welcome people as they arrive. Never let a new person sit ignore while everyone else chats. Make sure everyone has their agenda and any papers. Put them on the chairs or give them to people at the door. Introduce yourself and other speakers at the start of the meeting. If it is a small meeting, ask everyone to introduce themselves. Sometimes it works well to get people to say a bit more about themselves as part of the introduction. Tell people what the meeting is about. Don't assume everyone knows as much as you do. Good, what did you understand of this? Okay, teacher, uh, the key of this part is uh, uh, tips, right? Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, for example, we uh, we have a meeting at the end of the month in my neighborhood uh, and we we have the opportunity to to live and we we have a rotation a row but uh, it is necessary in in every meeting uh, it doesn't matter if a, a, a little meeting but uh, every every people or assistant uh, at, attend. Uh, if necessary, they feel well or welcome. And uh, like a tip, uh, the we we allowed the people introduce uh, introduce uh, themselves themselves and also uh, we have preparing we have prepared uh, the agenda uh, for for people know uh, the about the a point uh, to trade and for sure uh, we tried the people we, we tried in the meeting the people uh, feel a good environment right I think uh, these tips these tips are important in in every meeting perfect thank you so yes I mean Sometimes we forget about these little things, right? Sometimes it's like, okay, sit down, we're going to discuss about this because blah, 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 blah. Yeah. These little things are very important. In mind that you go to a meeting and somebody says, welcome to me. Hey, my name is, sit down, please. That little thing is a very good tip, right? Yes. Yeah. So, and uh, you need to be careful that everybody uh, has the, the welcoming, right? You don't have to put aside anybody. Uh, of course, all the material that you are going to handle, you need to organize so uh, they are in front of the chairs or uh, you give them whenever they are in common. That is another very good tip. Uh, of course, introduce yourself. I believe that is very important, uh, at least when this is a new meeting with new people, right? Yeah, or introduce everybody. They have to introduce themselves sometimes. If it's going to have enough time and if uh, um, we have new people in the group, right? And uh, explain what it's about. The last part is something I really like. Don't assume everyone knows as much as you. So, yeah, maybe you know a lot or maybe it's the opposite. You don't know that much and there are other people that know more than you. So you need to consider that one on any kind of things, right? Right, very good. The next one is for Anna Selby. Yes, teacher. Every chair needs some guidance about how the group wants their meetings to be run. 
it helps to, to set up some simple rules. This must be once everyone accepts and is prepared to work with, or they'd be useless. 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 Once you've got some rules agree, it is much easier to share the meeting and people are less likely to take it personally when you ask them not to interrupt or stop them from wandering off the topic. You need to work out the rules that suit your group. But here are some that are common, commonly used. What did you understand on this point? There are a specific rules the how um, you can organize the um, effective meeting. And it's important to, for example, uh, everyone accept and, and anticipate the preparation of the the different um, issues related related to the meeting. Mm. Uh, I I believe that is very important to to uh, effective communication during the meeting, teacher, because when the rules uh, the rules are, are clear is more effective the all relationship in this case uh, with the coworker it's very important the respect the time the respect the the it's possible to um, put your your cell phone in in you say play in Move the 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 modo de vuelo. <laughs> move. Yeah, plain mode. Plain, yes, plain mode. It, maybe simple rules, but uh, it's a good uh, con con convi convivencia teacher. Good. Uh, it's polite. Yeah. Okay. It's a good uh, manner, yes, a good manner for during the, the meeting. Okay, so that is so true. Very good. Uh, and uh, actually, you mentioned one of the most common rules that we have in meetings nowadays, right? No cell phones. Or uh, turn off cell phone or at least mute the cell phone, right? Because it's important what we're going to do and many other things. So... Uh, yes, rules are important. Uh, if you remember, the very first class that we always do is about that one. Turn on the camera, uh, attend the classes, right? Many things. Many things are involved in that one. Uh, in meetings, also it's another good idea uh, to ask if they agree. Because sometimes, I mean, someone might say, oh, I'm, I'm waiting for a very important call, so... If you know that one, I mean, that is it, right? Uh, but rules are very important to me, so everybody, uh, everything is, is going to go effectively and it's more productive, right? So this is a very good thing. And the next slide is about some rules that are good examples of this one, right? So let's see. Uh, uh, Silvia Sereima. Okay. Uh, examples of meeting rules. Ask people to speak through the chat. This means this means putting your hand up 
if you want to speak and waiting for the chair to say it's your turn. Don't interrupt other people. Stick to the item on the agenda. Don't talk amongst yourself. Respect other people's view. Don't groan or pull face when someone else is speaking. Wait until they finish and then put your point of view calm, calmly and polit politely. Politely. Keep politely. Keep contribution short and to the point. Start and finish the meeting on time. Remember, you will need to remind people of the meeting rules at each meeting. There may be new people there and even regular, regular attendance with forget a group can talk a while to get used to the meeting rules you agreed. If it doesn't work perfectly first time, keep on trying. Very good. What did you understand on that? Um, this is are the 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 rules for for the people uh, need use in the meeting because um, uh, for don't affect the, the concentration of the other people. And, and I need this, and, and I need respect respect these rules uh, I don't know okay very good actually that was very nice uh, and these are very good ideas of some rules I mean as people speak through the chair this means putting your hand up and if you want to speak uh, wait for the chair to say to your job so that is a very basic one raise your hand and wait for you to have your job don't interrupt other people this other one that is very important so other people is speaking and you interrupt i mean guys stick to the items on the agenda also very important some people as we discussed yesterday they want to speak about many other topics but we need to to finish this agreement right uh, don't talk amongst yourself so don't talk to each other amongst what is amongst anybody knows Is similar by between. No. Very good. Is well, it's similar. Yes. The difference is that between is one and two. More, uh, uh -huh. yeah. But and among surrounded also, by. Uh -huh. yeah. mm -hmm. Very good. perfect. Uh, of course, you need to respect other people's views. So this is a very important one. Don't ground or pull faces when someone is speaking. So. Sometimes that happens, right? Somebody's speaking and you do a face like, wow, uh, that's crazy, right? And, but people, they can see that one. So it's not a great, yeah. Or ground, do you know Do you know what is ground? To ground. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I will tell you. Ground is something like, you might somebody say something and you say, uh-huh. Or you say, mm, mm -hmm. something like that was wrong. So it's not good. You're speaking very nice there, and somebody is like, hmm, not good. That is something that we need to avoid. Okay. And uh, yeah, you can discuss and you, you can say that you don't agree on that, but not by doing those things. Uh, also, when you speak, you need to be short and concise. Stick to the point. 
And uh, the other one is for the facility here, for the chair. Start and finish the minimum time. So the first one, everybody try to, right? But finish the minimum time, sometimes they forget. And uh, every meeting, if it's possible, we need to remember the rules to everybody. So they remember about the respect and uh, the order on the things that you need to do. So very good tips. And uh, depending on your meetings, you might have a different one. So the next one is going to be for Gloria. Uh, here, teacher. Okay, could you the please case. help? Yeah. Okay. The, the case task of the chair during the meeting are a, a, getting so the business of time involving everyone reaching decision dealing with difficult people. Good, what did you understand on that? Um, I don't know. Okay, <laughs> so that is very easy, getting through the pieces on time, so do everything that is organized on the meeting. Involve everyone is very important. Reach the decisions or uh, what you have to do, the action plans. And the last one, depending, okay? Dealing with difficult people. Well, I don't know if in your company there are difficult people. Sometimes that happens. Right? Sometimes somebody is trying to do some jokes or never stop talking. So you need to handle those things. That is it. Very simple. Okay, uh, this is something that is related to when we're going to create an agenda or a meeting, sometimes we need to, to know how to write an objective. So let's discuss about that one, okay? Uh, Susana, Carolina, is it possible to you? Not possible, okay, let's see. Yeah. Sylvia, Selena. Okay. How to write a project objective, step by step. Why? Guide. Project guide. Project objective statements are used. Within every every single industry, where they serve to create a single rolling point that clarifies the goals of any bill or small project a company undertakes to move forward in their mission. Without this, often misunderstood statement, it's become extremely, extremely difficult to keep track of progress or in the, to make in it in the first place. So our project objective statement written, written. and written and what the steps need to be taken for before an effective project objective can be created. Okay, what did you understand on this? Um, I don't know, teacher. <laughs> okay, so it's very simple. Uh, the first thing that we check here is that prior objective statements are used within every single industry. So everybody uh, has objectives. Right, and we need to know who to write an objective. It doesn't matter where you work. They serve to create a single rallying point that clarifies the goals of any big or small project. So this is related to that, to the goals that we want to achieve. And uh, without these often misunderstood statements, 
it becomes extremely difficult to keep track of progress or indeed to make it in the first place. So if you don't have a good objective, I mean, if you don't have a target, right, you don't know where, where you are aiming, where you are going. So definitely this is something very important. So the way that an objective is written is very important, okay? How you create at an adjective. So the next one is for Manuel Antonio. Understanding a project objective. Before we can define what project objectives, which are also sometimes referred to as a to as project object statement or simply objectives, it may help to take a step back to look at the nature of the term project. In the business world, any relatively short term in the ever that seeks to achieve a specific and predetermined outcome, service, product, or change can be called a project. In one way or another, all projects are designed to add value, typically in the form of profit. Good, what did you understand here? Okay. Uh, this is a, like a one advice uh, that uh, when uh, before we, we have a a project, but before defined uh, the objectives of a project, uh, this term uh, have a different ways to to state to statement, right? Uh, we we can uh, we can have a uh some uh, some step uh, for for the project and to to have a achievement uh, I don't know uh, to 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 define have uh, clearly, about the project, uh, I don't know. <laughs> uh, that's all that I I understand because it's a project objective, right? It's not in nothing in conclusion. <laughs> okay, very well. Actually, that was very good. So, uh, yes. So, uh, what is a project? Right, anything that you are going to do so you can transform or to get some profit or to transform anything. So you need to understand what is the project objective first. So you can write the objective, right? You need to understand what you want to achieve, what you want to do in the company yeah. or in your department or in the process that you are writing. So you can write down the object. Good. Next one is for, let's see. Excuse me, Eric. Uh -huh. Excuse me, Eric. I think I I do not feel um, well with this kind of dynamic because I am not able to learn the new vocabulary. For example, in the last one, it was a it was a word that I didn't know, and you know the. The, the rhythms of the dynamic, you read, you explain, uh, don't allow, in my, in my personal opinion, don't allow me to, to ask about this new vocabulary I am interested to know. <laughs> okay. Excuse the, me, uh, but no, in the is... second class, I think it is very important, you know, to express it. Uh, yeah, you are right, but you're not right. <laughs> I mean, 
you are able to express your opinion, but remember that this is advanced. In the advanced, we are not going to go word by word. What you can do is you can write down the words and look for the words. And that's why every Friday, you are going to come to the class and explain, I saw this vocabulary and the meaning of this word is this and the example of this word is this. But we cannot, we cannot go uh, and stop word by word because in the advanced level, we need to speak, we need to read, we need to see videos and, and express opinions. That's what we do. So what I need you to do is to be more fluent. Of course, in all the readings, and one of the most important parts whenever we do a reading is vocabulary. So you are free to write down the, the word and look for that in a dictionary. So definitely you can do that one. And on Friday, we're going to have a space so everybody can uh, show two or three words that you learn in the class or in a book or wherever, uh, and you can share that with us. I don't know if uh, that is kind of clear. Okay, okay, okay. Very well. So that's why I have a lot of things. So you can, I mean, you can get the pronunciation of some words. Sometimes that's why I, I read again, because we need to check some pronunciation uh, and everybody have able to provide uh, what you understand on this. So that is like the main purpose of this, because this is advanced, of course. Uh, but always, we're always are going to find new vocabulary and definitely you can write down the book and look for that in the dictionary. So that's why we have a space. I mean, uh, meanwhile, somebody's reading and you're paying attention, you can say, oh, that is an important word. I will write it down. And that's it. Good. So this one is going to be for uh, you. Could you please help me reading this one, maybe? Sure. Perfect. Projects are temporary campaigns with clear goals. The, the success or failure of which can be measured. Measured. They mesh. begin mesh. They mesh. begin measured. Measured. They begin and at some point they must come to a close. In the modern world, a whole niche of professionals called project managers has emerged to oversee projects and push them closer to success. Okay, what did you understand on this? Okay, projects are a uh, short... Oh, I have learned a new word, endowment. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> endeavor, endeavor. 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 And the board, yes. Okay. Uh, it is speaking about what project is. It are a temporary campaigns that has a, a begin and an end. And at some point, do design projects to be end at a specifically a specific time. And then uh, it is very interesting because in the the in the last time a new profession like project managers has emerged to oversee projects or to control the projects, to facilitate the projects from the beginning to the end and, uh, and push all the team projects to achieve success. Perfect. So yeah, you say that very, very clear. And uh, sometimes uh, just, to go back to the point that you say, uh, sometimes I found words that are, I know that are new words for everybody. And those words definitely we can check. For example, in this one, we have niche. Uh, anybody knows what is niche? It is the same uh, meaning that in Spanish. <laughs> Um, what is the meaning in Spanish? Let's see. <laughs> Explain. Uh, it's, it, it's like a, a new um, a new camp, a new um, area of, of work, niche. Something like that. It's like 
like a target, a specific target a or target, a segment. A specific uh -huh. target or segment. Okay. Very good, perfect. And another word that we can see here is oversee. What is oversee? To manage, to conduct. Something like that. Very good. Perfect. Very good. Thank you very much. So let's go to the next one. This is going to be for Ana Patricia. Okay. Uh, project objectives serve as an ind indispensable tool to help or involve achieve this success. A uh, project objective as several distinct proposed. We purposes. can be proposes. Uh, we can be summarized. Summarize. Summarize as clearly, clearly, def, def, defining, defining, the purpose, defining the purpose. Yes, objective of the project. Some projects only have a single important objective, we, while other projects unfold in a stage and have multiple distinct objectives. In clearly, Laying this objective out a single comprehensive document and um, the project objective statement. The, uh, the organization ensures that all relevant stakeholders are aware of the price size, size. and the size and scope the project. This ensures that the scope is not excessive and also that all goals, goals can be met. Can be met. Can be met. Okay, what did you understand on this one? Um, um, I understand the... Uh, it's important to uh, pro propose um, an objective in the in in the project. Okay. I don't know. So, so yeah, I mean, uh, as we discussed before, uh, if you don't have clear what is going to be the the target of the project, I mean, it's not possible to create an objective, right? You are not all, you won't be able to achieve that definitely. So clearly defining the purpose of the, uh, the project is, is very, very important. And uh, we need to create like one single comprehensive document. So we, we have a statement, uh, there is like a verb that we need to use, right? Actually, that has to be in infinity and ensures that everybody is aware of the project. So when you read the objective, you understand. You understand what is this about. So you can uh, then move forward and start working to achieve the goals of the objective. Very good. Nice. Let me check. Oh, here. Okay, the next one is for Maria Elena. It allows relevant uh, parties to be able to assess the progress of the project clearly. It can further create powerful motivational tool for those people responsible for bring, bringing uh, the project to successful close. Finally, project objective statement played a role in ensuring that each department or employee works uh, well together by creating a clear line of communication. Good, what did you understand on this? Um, continue uh, speak around the archetypes and the relevant is the 
progress and the project uh, can be clearly for everyone and motivate uh, the people. Um, and I don't know, make a goal, the project. And I don't know. Okay. And all need work uh, together and take um, our only line of communication. Very good. So you can see how important it is to create a very nice objective, right? It's not just to, to write an objective, because everybody, when you read an objective, uh, everybody has to understand what is this about. So definitely is one of the most important part of any project. And the same happens with a business meeting. Sometimes you have to define what is the objective of the meeting or what objectives are you going to achieve on this. Definitely, this is very, very important. Next one is for Wendy Maribel. Okay, a key objective statement is then of what? Statement. A statement, sorry. Is then a roadmap in a compass all in one. An objective statement makes sure that everyone knows exactly what they are doing. How do how to do it and what outcome this work should lead to for a single document to be able to achieve all those things. It is immediately apparent that it has to be extremely well crafted and clear. Yet all of this is achieved in a very short statement. Similar to project of objective statements, research objective statements, provide a framework for science, scientific, scientific. No, scientific research and these statements indeed contain many of the same elements. Good, what did you understand on this one? A project of team statement is the road map uh, in a compass system. Is uh, for example, the lines of, of the objective, or is is a single is a single document because is a is the map or is the lines or order. For example, the objective is clear or. or how do you say it debe ser? It should be. It should be. It should be clear and short, but it's, it's a map. It's, um, it's similar to the project of the objectives because it's a resume. I understand that it's a resume statement. Very good, perfect. So that is it. So that's what makes this very important. When you read an objective, it's like a map and a compass on where you are going to go, right? You are going in that direction and the objective is telling you when, where is going to happen something. Very good, perfect. Thank you, Wendy. Uh, play objectives versus project goals versus project plan. What is the difference? And that is something that Carla is going to tell us. Project objective versus project goals versus project plan. What is the difference? People sometimes ask what the difference between project goals and project objectives. 
is an also this design of fierce plants to be very similar. They are entirely disparate entities. A project goal is extremely broad and can usually be summarized very effective in three words or less. A project goal could be to improve user experience, to attract more customers, or even to increase profit. A project goal offer a very quick glimpse into the underlying uh, underlying and a company is uh is I mean for the mood the very completely omits specific the step that will need to be taken in order to realize the goal. Good what do you get from this? And I understand that a project goal is a immediate objective and a, a project objective is a global is a global um, goals <laughs> or is a is a similar global plans that a project. Very good, so that is it, right? So, uh, they seem to uh, to be very similar, but they are not because of what you say. So, a project goal is very, very general, right? And, and it's summarized. And the other one is like, where are you aiming? But omit um, specific things. So, it's like, we want to do this, this, and this, and that's it. Okay. Okay, let's continue with that one. Walter Mauricio. Okay, teacher. Uh, a project, a project object is time fears that by including very principally are the most important. Uh, right in with the on the link goal will be met in addition in determining when this should be done. He can be helpful to look at project goals and project budgeting statement as to basis within the same process on the goal has been determined. The way to achieve it in the call in the call for long. But for long after that, we need your project objective statement, prefer define, definite. What a project is uh, aiming to attribute, who is going to do so, and when the project should be completed, a project plan lies all the times. In the method is why a project plan service as a procedural key Guide. that that uh, further explain who the project OGT will arise uh, rallies in the other world. Okay, what do you get from this? Okay, project. Oh. Is the project uh, the other and the all the companies is the project and are a uh, uh, goals, a uh, planification, and addition, a can, a we can, the different, uh, the projects, and, and one proposed, is a, a opt-in and more, more work, more money. Is, I don't know. This. Okay. No. Yeah. Uh, uh, yes, I mean, pre-goals and pre-objectives are 
like within the same process, right? The project goals, as we discussed, uh, is like different goals that we're going to achieve. And the project objective is like the whole thing, everything that the project is going to achieve. And with the project plan, it's like the process, the steps that we need to take so we achieve certain tasks or certain uh, objectives. So that will be. And there is a word here that is kind of strange, succinctly. Do you know what is that? Very succinctly. Okay, succinctly is, uh, I'll go ahead, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm looking because I, I didn't know the word and it's not there in, in a brief and clearly expressed manner. I think that's Very the meaning good. that. Oh. So, uh -huh. so For example, that... here's an example. One word succinctly describes the economy's performance in balance. Okay. I, I, I understand that it's uh, a brief, clearly express manner. Perfect. I don't know how can I how can I um oh my god how can how can uh, adapt the word to the to the meaning of the, okay. for the entire lecture. Yeah you know this word is not that common but that happens sometimes in English there are many words that uh, you can exchange so you can sound very professional, right? And this is one of those words. So whenever you want to say something that is brief and short, concise, very good, you can use succinctly. Nice. Okay, my friends, we're going to stop because it's time to go to bed. So let's check the attendance. And do you have any questions before we finish? Perfect. So let's check the attendance. Ada Patricia Linares Galdames. Present teacher. Good. Adriana Stephanie Martinez Flores. Present. Good. Alejandra Michelle Hueso Najera. For her is the 101 of tonight. Uh, Ana Selmi Chavez. Present teacher. Good. Edwin Alexander Ayala Eraso. Gloria Elizabeth Dinares Galdamez. Carla Verónica Vázquez de Rivas. Present teacher. Good. Maybe Coromoto García de Calderón. Present. Good. Manuel Antonio Palma. Present. Good. María Elena Guadalupe Peñate Escobar. Present. Good. Mario Ernesto Villeda. Rosa Elena Salgado de Serrano. Present teacher. Good. Silvia Suleima Rodríguez de González. Present teacher. Good. Susana Beatriz Ortiz de Cornejo. Present teacher. Good. Susana Carolina Hernández y Present. Good. Walter Mauricio Morales Arauco. Present. Good. Wendy Maribel Zabaleta Ochoa. Present. Perfect. Okay, my friends, it was a pleasure to be with you tonight. Uh, so see you tomorrow. Dream very well. Have a good night. See you tomorrow and dream in English. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you, teacher. Go to the side. Okay. <laughs> Teacher, sorry, the camera, the, the micro, um, microphone uh, freeze. Okay, perfect. Don't worry, I got you. <laughs> okay, thank you. Good night. Good night. Hello, uh, Mario, do you have any questions or anything that you would like to check?